we are going to begin just sort of with the the evolving story that is the transfer portal. Couple different players that we want to hit here. Couple quarterbacks. Uh, a very important defensive player. Twenty six years old, I think, is where Tyler Shuck is going to be. As he's like, I'm not kidding. Like, it will actually be his seventh year of college football. As he suits up, he's committed to the Louisville Cardinals. Kentucky, by the way, we'll get to them in just a little bit. As of this morning, uh, they apparently have gotten their quarterback for the 2024 season. So, um, Tom, when we think about Tyler Shuck and you know, going to link up with Jeff Brom, before we get to some of the dominoes of what this might mean for other big quarterbacks, as you know, the Louisville position, you're saying goodbye to Jack Plummer. There's not an obvious successor right there on the roster. Is it is this something that we give a, a thumbs up? I have no, I had no idea how it will work out. Like, what is the Tyler Shuck fit? What is the expectation for him with the Cardinals? Man, Jeff Brom's got a type. Um, <laughs> I I look at I, it. I, I I still can't get over the fact he's 26 years old and he's still playing. Like we we've seen this back in the day, like with Chris Wenke and guys who went to go play baseball for a few years and then came back. But it's just strange to me the way COVID has just completely changed all this stuff in the transfer. But um. I don't like if if I'm a Louisville fan, I'm not like over the moon about it, but he's the same kind of quarterback I feel like Brahm has had for the last seven, eight years, even going back to Western Kentucky and his time at Purdue. It's just it's a jag to jag plushest guy who is going to be able to execute the offense the way he wants. And that's really what he's going for. And I think just getting the experience is probably something important to him too, instead of having to rely on somebody young. And my God, does Tyler Shuck have a lot of experience? Well, I was going to say, you were saying it's wild to see somebody 26 year old, seven years of eligibility. Who's only played about three games consecutively his entire <laughs> career. Like, I don't mean to rip on him, but that's what I would be like. Oh, like really get know? another one. Like, right. Like their ability. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Like, do we need, like, that's the biggest concern of all. And I like, I don't know what he was paid, but, and I don't know, but I would hope he's coming in to compete. You know, like if this is your answer, I'd be, I'd be worried if I'm a Louisville fan. So like, I think it's a good addition to add some depth, but like, if this is going to be your guy, what's the deal with Jack Plummer? Is he eligibility done? He doesn't have an eighth year. <laughs> it has to be right. Like, he, right. He I mean, because he's doing in Cal and I don't he, know. No, no, he uses, right. well, think about it. He uses the one time to get to Cal. And then he uses the grad transfer to get to Louisville. I haven't added up his four to play five, or I guess like six. Because he play was five. at Purdue before then for two, two years, years, I think. So yeah. he might have been at Cal for two, and then at Louisville for one. So maybe it is done. But I, I just like I said, I hope there's depth there. I hope it's not just him. Like, and I'm sure they won't because I'm sure they're aware of the history too. Well, they they signed Pierce Clarkson last year. Mm -hmm. right who, who was a, a fairly highly rated guy like maybe that means he's not like super ready to take over the reins this year uh louisville schedule does get more difficult next year like we, we talked about that often and, and early in this offseason uh, about how they had a real opportunistic schedule this year then it's going to come back around on them a little bit more in 24. I, i'm interested in sort of the the, the downstream effects of this so mm. tyler van dyke was, was very much rumored to go to louisville like where does he go now right um Louisville was also reported to be in the DJ uh, Uyungle sweepstakes with FSU. Does that mean DJ U is going to go to FSU now, like locked up, or will another team jump in there to try to compete with the Knowles uh, for that one? Like, there's a lot of different the, the, the domino effect in the portal is is very real. We, we've spoken about how everybody's sort of waiting to figure out where does Cam Ward go, what's the what, what's the dollar figure there, uh, but it. it Almost all of these decisions have implications. Do you think that it is as cold as, um, and I'm not trying to expose anything major here, but do you think it is as as cold as the the number for for some of these domino effects, or do we still have like some ties to your classic recruiting relationships, scheme fit, you know, those sorts of things as well? Because you mentioned, you know, like uh, DJ Uyunglele is is going to be out there. The Cam Ward certainly seems like the 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 high profile one, but you know, like we talked about, is Dylan Gabriel going to be at Mississippi State? And if Mississippi State can't get Dylan Gabriel because Dylan Gabriel is looking somewhere else, you know, I guess he's on his official visit. Uh, Pete Thamel, I think, reported he's on his official visit to Oregon right now. Riley Leonard on an official visit to Notre Dame. Like the pieces are starting to fall into place a little bit. Do you think it's 
it's still a little bit of relationship and recruiting? Or do you think that right now in the free agency market, it is it is just cold? Like, what is the number going to be and who can get the best number? For guys who have legitimate NFL aspirations, the fit and the system and the development has to matter. Right. Right. Or for else dudes, they're idiots. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, for guys who don't have legitimate NFL tools, they just happen to be really good at the sport of college football, then it makes more sense for them just to chase the biggest bag. And oftentimes, like, the place that's the best fit may also give you the biggest bag because they probably need you pretty bad. What about the value of the degree? Well, like, it's a 40-year decision for uh, for Riley Leonard, right? <laughs> that's what they say. But, no, I do think that's where you need good representation, good supporting, like, your family, your agent, your, you know, whoever you're talking to that you're getting advice from. I think it's critically important. And I, I know a lot of coaches have said this. But, like, don't just go for the bag because you might get the bag in the short run, but the much bigger bag is waiting for you if you can pay this thing off. Like, I think Penix, don't you think Penix probably increased his stock more than Knicks, or do you think it's about the same? Like, both of those guys, I know it was easier for Penix because he reunited with DeBoer, but I thought both of them made outstanding decisions. I do wonder if Bo Nix, if people start really diving into the tape, they're like, oh, and then they go back and look at what happened to Dallas, you know, at Auburn and the SEC. They're like, oh, it's a little bit easier to play here. So I don't know if he's necessarily a first rounder. I'd be surprised. But like, I think Penix is somebody you saw the way he's stretching the field vertically, arm strength, accuracy. I thought he he made himself a ton of money by making the right decision. Um, what are some of those other downstream pieces that you're looking for, Bud? Where, where, where does Howard from Kansas State go, right? Like, is, is he a guy who could be a good fit for Nebraska? I, I actually kind of think so. And, and I, if I'm Nebraska, if they could pull that off, I, I think you'd have to be uh, pretty excited there. You know, um, do you I, think I, that Florida State's uh, in the lead for DJU? Because Mississippi State, I guess, might would would have been the other sort of rumored potential target, right? Am I reading that correctly? I, I think so. Yeah, I, I um, I don't think Florida State is likely uh with DJ, with, with uh, Dante Moore um you know he, he's still out there I, yeah I think FSU is probably in a, a good spot for DJU I, I don't think it's locked up or anything like that um and I, I would tell you guys if I thought it was but I, I think they're probably in a, in a decent spot but as as the boards sort of evolve different teams are going to get more involved so that's what I, I, I want to see like everybody knows Louisville's out Louisville has some real NIL money so they've made their call we'll see who else makes a call does it tell anything? Because I think the the reality in a lot of this, and I think we talked about this, was that some of these guys they're going to get the payday. Other guys have been cut, you know, yeah. unintended. Oh, you know. like when you enter yeah. the transfer portal. Like, so uh, we yeah. let's go ahead and mention it. Brock Vandegrift hits the portal, and he's in the portal for two days, and now he's committing to Kentucky. Like, just I really liked what they had to say for five minutes later. <laughs> I mean, that clearly is. I, I mean, not clearly. My assumption is Carson Beck's coming back and Brock Vandegriff is like, well, I'm, I'm not going to play and I don't right. want to sit around another year. And that's right. not getting cut as much, but well, that is like... I was thinking much. of Kyle McCord. You know, I was thinking oh, of Dylan oh. Gabriel. Yeah. You know, those guys who had really good years, and I could say you could argue Dylan Gabriel had a much better year than Kyle McCord, did, you know, falling short of expectations, fan criticism. But... Isn't that a situation where you may be surprised if his people went and were like, hey, all right, what's the number this year? And it's like, oh, we might want to go a little less. Or what, or maybe it's off the table altogether. And then it's legitimately like you are not going to get anything. You can come back because we can't take away your scholarship. But if you want any NIL money, you better go look elsewhere. That's where I think like there's good and bad. And I think that's one of the things that it really is like the NFL. If you don't perform, you might not have that offer on the table. And it's your best interest financially to go somewhere else. What's the situation with Pat Payton at Florida State? Good defensive player, came on strong this year, exceeded, I think, expectations. Is that fair? Maybe not internally, but externally. He was not He was not one of the first names mentioned when we were talking about Florida State in July. I, mean, I think Pat Payton's a really good player. You know, like he's not as good as Jared Verse, but he's still like a really good player. And so he tweeted that he was going to go in the portal. An apology, right? Sorry, Knowles fans. Sorry, Knoll Nation or whatever. Yeah, but but you don't enter the portal via Twitter. You enter the portal via going in and talking to compliance and submitting your paperwork. That hadn't happened. So to me, this looks like a leverage play. Now, if I'm a player, I can't begrudge a guy for doing it. We, we, we can sit here and talk about, 
hey, like we shouldn't negotiate via social media. And I think that's fair. And if you run FSU, you have to be like, all right, how many times is this going to happen? Because, you know, like Farmer last year hit the portal, found out the money wasn't what he thought it was going to be out there, in my opinion, had to come back. We'll see if if Peyton actually follows through and hits the portal. I think he really might, right? Like if you're FSU or any of these schools, really, you don't really want to set the precedent that like you're going to get strong armed via social media negotiation, you know? Um, we'll see. I, I think, I think Peyton's a hell of a player at a certain point though, the best competing offer is going to come from the NFL. Like Todd okay. Peyton may, may just decide like, like maybe he just decides to go to the NFL. They, uh, they're visiting like four or five defensive ends already and like three defensive tackles. So I could see farmer leaving as well, potentially, you know, if, if for portal additions or high school portal. Wow. So I, I don't know. I don't think this caught FSU completely off guard with because of some of the guys who run together and are tight and some of the negotiation tactics from the past, uh, you know, the past year. This is if, why it gets him. He's he's a stud. Like, like we should not discount how good of a player Peyton is. Like he is really damn good. This is why coaches are pounding the table for regulation. They yeah. want to be able to control that. I mean, again, this is where college football players have more leverage than NFL players. Brock Purdy, great season last year gets hurt. Maybe, you know, this year he's in the MVP conversation. Second year, he can't go out and test the market. He can't go out there and say, hey, I want to go see where I want to go. No, nope. like you are under contract and the team can decide. He could hold out. He could stay out the year, but no one's going to do that. Every single year, anytime you have a good year, especially if you're graduating, and you haven't used that one time, you can go say, hey, I'm going to test the market. I'm going to be a free agent every season. You can do it multiple years in a row. Did, this is, did, did Pat Payton announce that he was entering the transfer portal before or after Florida State was bragging about all the new NIL contributions it got following being left out of the playoff? Right. Exactly. <laughs> that That's a good point. <laughs> like you sit there, you're on Twitter, you see Florida. We've got like another million dollars in donations just yesterday. And then he's like, I am Ooh. entering the transfer yes. portal. <laughs> I, I think that goes on a lot of these. Uh, yeah, I, you have to, right? I've been really torn on that because, you know, I had a, a philosophy I would have liked to adhere to. And it's been like, hey, if you don't want to play here, go. You know, that was often my conversation, like with Jimbo. Jimbo was flirting with every season, like trying to drive his price up. And it bothered me. I didn't like it. But it's really hard to, uh, hard to fault a player for taking advantage of the system. But I do think Bud makes a great point. Like, how about that decision-making process of do you want to set that precedent of, oh, all right, we'll pay you. We'll match. Because then what are those teammates going to see? Hey, yeah. he just got matched. But I guess that's just it's a harsh reality of what we're dealing with. Uh, we'll be a little bit later getting into a potentially landscape-changing proposal uh, from the NCAA president, Charlie Baker, that includes schools being able to pay the players directly. And that it would be one way that would at least change some of the economics of this transfer portal time. Uh, how will it change? We'll, we'll take our best guess at some of that uh, a little bit later. Any other names? Jeff Sims entered the portal. Whoopsie Daisy King. Whoopsie Daisy. Um, and any other names that uh, that pop up since the last time we uh, we got together? I hope he finds someplace good. Heck yeah. I, I, I always really enjoyed covering Jeff Sims. I, I thought he was a, a you know a real nice kid to talk to and, and, and has you know some ability. It, if he ends it uh, ends up like a G5 or something, I I it wouldn't shock me to see him have a good year. Uh, you know? a absolutely. You put you put him I mean Oh, Jaquan uh, Finn from Toledo entered. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. Uh Fancher from Marshall entered. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's special. I'm not saying Daquan, bad. Daquan Finn could be very good at the P5 level. Taylor Green, uh, I believe, either tweeted or actually entered. But Ashton Ginty came back. Yeah. Yeah. That's now that's a pretty good get for Boise. Like, there's a lot of teams yeah. out there to think Ashton Ginty is like, legit. Maybe they, uh, because they just oh, promoted yeah. Spencer Danielson, that's just like a little bit more booster money lying around since we don't have to go and like poach somebody new. I, th I think that is a great allocation of funds with, to uh, get them in the pockets of one of the top running backs in the country this year. Curtis, Chris, yeah, the chat pointed right. that out. I mean, that's again, and I think I've given this analogy on here before. I mean, what you're seeing is 
It's like minor league baseball. There's single A, which is FCS. You get a Cam Ward who pops up. You have double A, which is probably the MAC. And then unfortunately, you know, triple A is becoming maybe the ACC and Big 12. And then the big leagues are, you know, ultimately the NFL, but then it's right before there, you know, is is the SEC and Big Ten. And that's what we're looking at. Um, I don't want to get there too fast because I know we want to talk about the coaches, but we were talking about Will Howard. Does it tell you anything if Colin Klein doesn't bring him with him? It could, but it could also just say Will Howard doesn't want to go to Texas A&M. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or Texas right. A&M doesn't or want Ma- Will Howard. Yeah, I was going to say, or Mike Elko has like other, other Connor plans. Wegman. Yeah. 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 So that, that would make sense uh, to me. Uh, for Jeff Sims, um, TJ Flint, TJ Finley was at two SEC schools, but then he gets to Texas State. That's a pretty good season. You know, mm-hmm. like there's, you're at Georgia Tech, you're at Nebraska. You might there's definitely a, a way that he could be a very very good G five quarterback. So, uh, will be interesting to continue to track that one. 